surface assets searching for the Titan, and we expect 10 total surface assets to search in the next 24 to 48 hours. There are two ROVs actively searching, and several more are in route and will arrive by tomorrow morning. We've received incredible support with aviation assets from our Coast Guard Air Station in Elizabeth City, the Air National Guard, and Canadian Armed Forces. Today there are two back-to-back -back P3 flights. Uh, one is ongoing now as I speak, uh, totaling 14 hours of continuous uh, on-scene coverage, and two C-130 flights, uh, also one ongoing now uh, throughout the day and into the evening. Yesterday, a Canadian P-3 detected underwater noises in the search area. As a result, ROV operations were relocated in an attempt to explore the origin of the noises. Although the ROV searches have yielded negative results, they continue. Additionally, the DAG surface assets searching for the Titan, and we expect 10 total surface assets to search in the next 24 to 48 hours. There are two ROVs actively searching, and several more are in route and will arrive by tomorrow morning. We've received incredible support with aviation assets from our Coast Guard Air Station in Elizabeth City, the Air National Guard, and Canadian Armed Forces. Today there are two back-to-back -back P3 flights. Uh, one is ongoing now, as I speak, uh, totaling 14 hours of continuous uh, on-scene coverage, and two C-130 flights, uh, also one ongoing now, uh, throughout the dead surface assets searching for the Titan. We expect 10 total surface assets to search in the next 24 to 48 hours. There are two ROVs actively searching, and several more are in route and will arrive by tomorrow morning. We've received incredible support with aviation assets from our Coast Guard Air Station in Elizabeth City, the Air National Guard, and Canadian Armed Forces. Today there are two back-to-back -back P3 flights. Uh, one is ongoing now, as I speak. Uh, totaling 14 hours of continuous uh, on-scene coverage and two C-130 flights, uh, also one ongoing now uh, throughout the day and into the evening. Yesterday, a Canadian P-3 detected underwater noises in the search area. As a result, ROV operations were relocated in an attempt to explore the origin of the noises. Although the ROV searches have yielded negative results, they continue. Additionally, the data from the P-3 aircraft has been shared with our U.S. Navy experts for further analysis, which will be considered in future search plans. The surface search is now approximately two times the size of Connecticut, and the subsurface search is up to two and a half miles deep, exponentially expanding the size of the search area. We also have to factor in the ever-changing weather conditions, currents, and sea states that expand the search area every hour. There is an enormous complexity associated with this case due to the location being so offshore, so far offshore, and the coordination between multiple agencies and nations. We greatly appreciate the outpouring of support and offers to provide additional equipment. The Unified Command continues to prioritize assets and resources in order to provide the best capability in the most timely manner. This includes weighing multiple factors to identify the most effective resources available to the response operation. With careful consideration to timeliness of equipment arriving on scene, usefulness and ability to deliver assets to the search area. Over the past 48 hours, we have, through incredible unity of effort, mobilized and implemented a tremendous amount of expertise and response capability. In addition to the ships and aircraft previously mentioned, we've dispatched two subject matter experts from U.S. Navy NAVC SUPSAL, who will serve as search coordinators on scene for underwater search operations. So. I've been stressing uh, unity of effort a lot uh, in this statement, and that's because it is absolutely critical to this complex operation. Again, our thoughts and prayers are with the crew of the Titan and their loved ones. We will continue to work as hard and as quickly as possible in an effort to locate them. Uh, I will take a few questions, um, but before I do that, I do want to, I'm going to have uh, each of the members of the team here just introduce themselves, and then I'll go ahead and, uh, and take some questions. Good afternoon. I'm Paul Hankins. Uh, I'm the director for uh, salvage operations with the U.S. Navy's supervisor of salvage. Hello, I'm Carl Hartsfield from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Commander Rich Cantharia. I'm an exchange officer currently serving on the staff of Commander Submarines Atlantic at Norfolk, Virginia. 
Good afternoon, Lieutenant Commander Christy Butler, working closely with Captain Frederick from RCC Boston, Search and Rescue Mission Coordinator. Thank you. Captain, what more can you tell us about the noises that were heard? Uh, can you give us any more detail? And just to follow up, from what you've gathered so far, uh, based on those noises, should that give the families and the, the others who care for these people, should that give them some reason to hope? So a, a couple things. One, I think um, when you're in the middle of a search and rescue case, you always have hope. That's, that's why we're doing what we do. Um, with respect to the noises specifically, we don't know what they are, uh, to be frank with you. Um, we, they, the P3 detected noises. That's why they're up there. That's why they're doing what they're doing. That's why they put sonar buoys in the water. Um, the good news is, what I can tell you is we're searching in the area where the noises were detected, and we'll continue to do so. And we, we hope um, that when we're able to get additional ROVs, which will be there in the morning, the intent will be to continue to search um, in those areas where the noise were detected, and if they're continuing to be detected, and then put additional ROVs down in the last known position where the search was originally taking place. Yeah, are the noises still being noises detected, Captain? Regular 30 minute intervals as reported. I hadn't heard uh, 30 minute uh, intervals. So here's what I can tell you. We, so I, I am not a trained ear for underwater aquatics. Um, that's why we have a team of experts that are analyzing that data. That data was sent immediately to, uh, to the Navy uh, last night and it was analyzed overnight, they're still looking at it, but I can tell you that it's, it's inconclusive. Um, but again, I think the important piece is, we're searching in the area where the noises were detected. Captain, 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 the oxygen, that, that, that's just one piece of data, right? There, there are a lot of pieces of data that we need to consider. And, you know, we're continuously looking at that and we'll continuously, uh, you know, do that throughout the search. Um, but that's not the only thing that's important, right? And, and right now our efforts are, are solely for, focused on the search. Um, that certainly is a dialogue that's happening, um, but, uh, but we're focused on searching at this point. And this is a, a recovery or a rescue? Oh, this is a this is a search and rescue mission, 100%. We are smack dab in the middle of search and rescue, and uh, and uh, we'll continue to put every available asset that we have in an effort to to find the Titan and the crew members. Now, what's that now? Are those ROVs, and can you confirm that some sort of rectangular object has been spotted? There was some sort of report about that the night. So well, a couple things. So the, the ROVs all each ROV brings different capability. Uh, the ROVs that are diving today. Um, oh, what's the what's the depth on this? Four thousand yards. 4,000 meters, um, and they, some additional ROVs that will be arriving tomorrow have uh, additional depth capability. Um, with respect to uh, an object, so yesterday one of the aircraft uh, did see an object. I, I will tell you this, in search and rescue missions, when aircraft are flying continuously, there is stuff out in the ocean that is floating. Um, we went back, we looked at it, 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 it wasn't, we, we didn't determine it to be debris, we don't think it's, it, it, it correlates with the case, and it is not uncommon at all during an active search to see things and then we go and look at them. So, so Captain, I'm just passing these to you. When was the when were these noises first heard? How long did they sit for? And if I could also ask, do you have any information in terms of food and water that the men might have on board the plane? Yeah, so the, the P so several P three flights are, have heard noises um, as yesterday and we put uh, assets there. Uh, we, we relocated assets immediately. Um, with respect to uh, food and water, it's my understanding there are some limited rations. I, I can't tell you exactly how much um, they have aboard, but they do have some limited rations aboard. Uh, yeah, yeah, so speaking to the families, how much hope can you give them after hearing those noises? Listen, you, I, I think you need to be careful. Um, we, we need to have hope, right? But but I don't. I can't tell you what the noises are. But what I can tell you is, and I think this is the most important point, we're searching where the noises are, and that's all we can do at this point. Is that your now best, is that your best clue right now about the status of the submersible or those noises? And are the noises continuing now? Have they stopped or are they continuing? So I, I, so I just wanted to, so it was my understanding that the P3 had heard some noises today as well. But So I do want to take just an opportunity to, uh, to invite uh, Carl uh, to the podium just to talk a little bit about, um, he has a little bit more expertise in, in underwater um, acoustics maybe just to speak to that in general because again um, you know th there are noises below the surface of the ocean um, and uh, so I'll, I'll just turn it to Carl. Carl, can you spell your name? Uh, yes, uh, C-A-R-L-H-A-R-T. 
H-A-R-T-S-F-I-E-L-D. So again, Carl Hartsfield from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Uh, so the ocean is a very complex place. Obviously, uh, human sounds, nature sounds, and it's very difficult to discern what the source of those no noises are at times, but I can tell you that this team has multiple sensors. They're in the area. They're sending data back expeditiously to the best in the world people to analyze that data, and then they're feeding the results of that analyst back to the unified team, and they're making decisions. So uh, Woods Hole is here in an advisory role, but uh, by our expertise, what I see is a very tight operational loop that's making decisions based on data, and nothing is ruled out. Are the noises so continuing? He said he heard the noises this morning. Are they still continuing on a regular basis now? There have been multiple reports of noises, and every one of those noises is being analyzed, tracked, looked for patterns, and reported upon. Can you describe what the noise sounds like that they're hearing? Uh, well, you, you know, the noise is, again, very complex in the ocean. Uh, you have to be an acoustic analysis, and you have to have context. They're trying to put all the pieces together. Uh, the noises have been described as banging noises. Uh, but again, they have to put the whole picture together in context, and they have to eliminate uh, potential man-made sources other than the Titan. Is it possible, is it possible that a ship in the ocean, is it possible a ship in the ocean, or even So uh, I can tell you from my experience with acoustics that there are sounds uh, by biologics that sound man-made to the untrained ear, but I can assure you that the people listening uh, to these tapes uh, are trained. Uh, there are a lot of vessels in the area and they each make noise, right? So all of that has to be eliminated and it's analysis over time, plus as the captain said, it's we're s the team is searching in the right area. So um, if you continue to analysis, do the analysis, look for um, uh, different patterns and search in the right area, uh, you're, uh, you're doing uh, you know, the best you possibly can do with the best people on uh, the case. What's the system that you're talking about? Um, flyway the ocean cloud system. That's just a hydraulic yeah. uh, a crane. Yeah. So, so that's what I thought. So, so that, that's a piece of equipment. Uh, it's a crane piece of equipment. Um, th there are a lot of pieces of equipment flowing in through St. John's right now. Um, one thing I did want to mention, I think it's important, um, some of the ROV capability that's arriving soon is, 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 is really great, incredible uh, capability. One thing I want to point out is that French team that's coming in. Um, to serve aboard with their equipment aboard a French ship. Uh, they, they bring some state-of-the-art equipment, and um, so w once they get on, we're gonna have more assets down to look, and uh, we'll continue to put them um, where we think uh, the best location is. Considering how many days left, are you still um, are you still looking at the ship that's gonna find them? So how many days, did you ask how many days? Are they, are yeah, considering so, how many days left. Well, so, we, we have to remain optimistic and hopeful when you're in a search and rescue case. I, so we're in this, we're right in the middle of a search and rescue case. So I, I don't I don't want to get into a discussion about when that would end um, with respect to this case. What I will tell you though, I'm happy to to explain to you kind of how that process were to work. Um, it, you know, the Coast Guard prosecutes search and rescue cases on a, on a daily basis, and sometimes we don't find what we're looking for, and you have to. You have to carefully consider uh, all of the factors, and um, there are a lot of factors you consider. And then after you consider all of those factors, sometimes you're you're in a position where you have to make a tough decision. We're not there yet, um, but if we continue to search, potentially we could be at that point. But again, we're not there yet, and um, that's a discussion that we will have uh, with the family long before um, I'm going to discuss that here publicly. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I can't put a number on 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 the like. You know, I, I'm not going to put a. I don't have a percentage number. What I would tell you is that that is just one data point 
and there are more there are more data points than that that we have to look at. So Captain, right now we continue to search and Captain, if I could, who heard the noises and how often did they hear the noises? Give us any more specifics. Did sure. they hear them this morning? Were they at 30 minute interval? Just give us some more specifics. About so the, re the report, so. And who's driving this the, the, the noises were heard by a Canadian P3, and that was this morning and some yesterday. I don't know specifically over that 30 minute intervals, but again, I really think the important point to that is we're in the air, we're searching there. We moved assets and we're searching there. and. Um, and we'll continue to do so. Watch this complete briefing, buddy. Yeah, I don't. So I, listen, I, whether it's operable or whether it's um, sitting on the ocean floor, whether it's in the sea column, whether it's in the surface, I, you know, I, it's all speculation. And, and, I, and we're, we're just not in the business of speculation. We're in the business of searching. And we're putting everything we can with the data we have to search for the vessel. And I think so we'll, take, we'll take one more question. Just want to say a bit more about the role of Canadians and the assistance being provided as well as the that have been Yeah, so we asked uh, for some additional um, uh, subsurface uh, support, and um, we got that through the Navy, um, through a, a liaison officer. He, he's just one of uh, many team members. And uh, we're we're greatly appreciative of the British government and all the support they've given us. Can we expect a daily update now on this? So uh, I, I think the plan will be to do it to do a daily like this. I'm not going to to lock into that right now, but um, but we'll keep you informed. And certainly, if uh, if there's any major developments, we'll let you know. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for attending today's press briefing. That will conclude all questions. Thank you. I do hear you, yes. All right, so Coast Guard provides an update on missing submarine. This morning, officials said that they had detected underwater noises in the search area. A report in the U.S. claimed banging sounds were heard at 30 minutes interval. British explorer Hamis Harding is one of the five people missing, along with the British-based Pakistani businessman Sahzada Daud and his son Suleiman. The other are French submersible pilot Paul Henry Nargulet and chief executive of Ocean Gate Expedition Stockton Russ. The submersible had about 96 hours of emergency oxygen on board, enough to last until Thursday morning. So thank you guys. Have a great day.